Hi friends, welcome to my channel Med Time with Dr. Munir Jan. Today I will be discussing basics of airway assessment. So the purpose, the goal of this basic airway assessment is to predict where there could be possibility of difficult ventilation and endotracheal tube intubation. So let's begin. First thing what you have to do, you have to take detailed history, airway history. Now what does airway history mean? That you should at least know was there any problem in the past while securing the airway? Was there any problem in the past while having patient anesthesia exposure? By this you will come to know okay this patient had previously also the problem. Now second there are disease conditions like asthmatic patients, COPD patients, ILD patient, they have problem with oxygenation and ventilation. So this thing also has to be kept in mind. Now the third thing, when you are doing this airway assessment in emergency, there is high possibility of problem that can happen with airway. Now after finishing the airway history, second important thing is the first glance assessment that is the look. If the patient is obese, obviously there will be problem with mask ventilation and endotracheal tube intubation. Second, if the patient is bared, if the patient is having abnormal facial features, if the patient is having scar around the neck, if the patient is having swelling around the neck, if the patient is having some abnormal structure in the neck, there could be possibility of problem. So first glance assessment, very important. Now moving to examination. Now the first important thing in the examination is you have to see what is the mouth opening. If the mouth opening is three finger breadth, that means adequate mouth opening. If it is less than that, that means inadequate. So possibility of problem that can happen. Now, after finishing this, you have to see the dentition now dentition should be assessed for what any if there is any presence of crowns if there is any artificial dentures if the patient is edentulous so if the patient is obviously edentulous possibility of difficult mask ventilation and endotracheal tube intubation can happen so second is the dentition assessment now the third thing is malum party classification or malum party classification very important classification now in this what we tell the patient to sit in front okay open the mouth as much as possible with protrusion of tongue now what are the structures usually that you can see if the patient you can see you're able to see partial pillars tonsils you are able to see soft palate hard palate ULA that means it's class 1. In, there is one more class that is class 0 where you can see tracheal rings also. Now class 2 you can only see partial visualization of ULA as you can see in this picture. And in class 3 you can see only soft palate. In class 4 you cannot see any structure beyond the tongue. So this is what is known as the modified malampati classification. So, now thyromental distance, very important. Now thyromental, what does it mean thyromental distance? You have to measure the distance from, you have to tell the patient to extend the neck and you have to measure the distance from the mentum to the thyroid cartilage. That's the most prominent part and you have to measure it. Now if this distance is less than 6 cm, possibility of high possibility of problem that can happen, difficult airway, difficult mask ventilation, intubation can happen. Now other is the mentosternal distance, that is the distance between the mentum and the sternal notch. Now if this distance is less than 12 cm, high possibility of problem that can happen. Now other is mandibular protrusion, you have to see the ability of the patient to move the lower jaw to move this jaw forward than the upper incisor or simply lower incisors forward to the upper incisor if the patient is able to do that that means class a if at the same level when you are telling the patient to protrude the lower incisors are at the same level of upper incisors as seen in the figure that is class b and not able to do that is class c in class B and class C, possibility of difficult airway can happen. Now, based on this assessment, there is one thing that is what is known as 
332 law. You can see from the figure 332 law. Now what does it mean? Three finger mouth opening. And you are able to accommodate three fingers from the mentum to the hyoid bone. And the third, that is two, you are able to keep your two fingers from the floor of the mouth to the thyroid cartilage. Now, if there is any deviation from this 332 law, there is possibility of difficult airway that can happen. Neck range of motion is also important to assess. You have to assess the range of motion of the neck. It's very important. Positioning before endotracheal tube is very important. We make the slipping position where we have flexion at the neck and extension at atlanta occipital joint. So if there is a problem with the neck extension or flexion, possibility of difficulty that can happen at the time of endotracheal tube intubation and as well as mass ventilation. So you have to assess the range of motion of the neck. Now, upper lip bite test, very important as far as predicting the difficult video laryngoscopy also. So this upper lip bite test can predict difficulty in video laryngoscopy also. So first important thing what you have to do, it assess this upper lip bite test, assess the patient's ability to reach and cover the upper lip. If the patient is able to reach and cover the whole upper lip, that means it's class one. If the patient is only partially covering the upper lip, as you can see from the figure, that means it's class two. And if patient unable to do or unable to cover the or reach to the upper lip, that means it's class three. So class two, class three, high possibility of difficult direct laryngoscopy, as well as video laryngoscopy. Now, based on these assessments, where there could be possibility of difficult mask ventilation. Now, first thing, if the patient is obese, difficult mask ventilation. If the patient is bare, difficult mask ventilation. If the patient is edentulous, difficult mask ventilation. If the patient is having malampati three or four classification, difficult mask ventilation. If the male sex, possibility of difficult mask ventilation. If there is limited neck movement, possibility of difficult mask ventilation. If there is severely limited mandibular protrusion, that means difficult mask ventilation. So based on this assessment, you can predict possibility of difficult mask ventilation. Now, based on this assessment, you can predict where there could be possibility of difficult intubation. If the patient is obese, if the malampati is three and four, if the patient is having thyromental distance less than six centimeter, if mentosternal distance is less than 12 centimeter, if their upper lip bite test is class three and class four difficult intubation, if mandibular protrusion is class C and class B, that means difficult intubation can happen. If the neck circumference is more than 40 centimeter, that means possibility of difficult intubation. If the patient is edentulous, possibility of difficult direct laryngoscopy can happen. So this is all about this uh, airway assessment. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and please give your valuable feedback. And once again, thanks for watching this video. See you next time.